So at some point in time in your college career, guess what you get to make? An MLA format paper. I know. It's annoying. It's terrible. Why do I have to do all this formatting? Why can't I just use wingdings? Because wingdings is tough to read as an instructor. I would fail you immediately from the class. I would just flat out, how dare you do such a thing uh, in my classroom? But we need to go ahead and jazz up our paper or jazz up. We have to de-jazz the paper. And the reason is, is because we want to make it uniform uh, to all the other papers. We don't want it to be unique in a special snowflake. One of the things that we can do is we can change the font. Now, this is actually uh, something that you don't have to do nowadays, but depending on the instructor, I'm not you know saying set in stone, most instructors prefer that you use Times New Roman as your font. Now, one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually use my handy dandy keyboard for a second, and I'm gonna hold down the control key. Now, holding the control key doesn't give me much, but I'm gonna then click on sort of the, there we are, I'm gonna click on the A button right there. And as soon as I do, look what happened to my text. Everything got highlighted, which is really nice because you know, I, don't, I wouldn't want to have to click and scroll through this. Uh, when I was a grad student writing my thesis, guess what? I had a 75 page paper. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. And so, again, now I want to change this to Times New Roman. Now I can click on the drop down menu for this, but I already know what I'm going to be looking for, so I can actually click on Calibri. And you see that it highlights it. And well, we know that when we highlight things, we can overwrite what's there. And if I start to type Times New Roman, just getting the Tim, T-I-M, I already see it available. Now, I haven't had any changes happen yet, but as soon as I hit Enter, you see that I now have some serifs appearing on my text. The next thing I have to do is I have to go ahead and I have to change sort of my font size. Right now, it's size 11. Well. Luckily, this is one of those beautiful things. MLA format dictates that it needs to be a size 12 font. So all I have to do is click on that increase font size button. And what do you know, that went ahead and made that taken care of, which is pretty nice as you can see. We can keep on going with this. One of the things we have to do is we have to get rid of all those line spacings in between my paragraphs and I have to indent my paragraphs. So how do I tackle that? Well, if you remember from our block style business letter, we can come over to this little tiny box here and we can click on it. And that gives me a dialog box that lets me control uh, a lot of the uh, inner workings of Microsoft Word. One such thing is that spacing we see right there, that's actually because I'm saying put eight points, points, little pixel thingies uh, there. And so if I, drop that down to zero, I've removed that spacing. And if I do line spacing, well, guess what? What do we need for MLA formatting? That's right, kids, double spacing, double spacing. So instead of multiple, I do double. Again, I also need to indent the first line in every paragraph. Guess what? I see indentation all in one spot. It's beautiful. I click on this little special section. I, I don't really recommend tackling these left and rights. I recommend coming over here to special clicking there and saying first line. You can see now, all right, we do that. Now, it, as you can see, it freaked out and it did it for, you know, Kea Chow over here, which that's not useful to me. So we do have to click off it. And we do have to highlight that portion right there. And we can come back, none. And it does the exact same thing. It removes the indentation now. And so we can scroll through here and yeah, yeah, we're starting to get something. 